diamond painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, stopping in to answer some more of your diamond painting questions. I have done a Your Diamond Painting Questions Answered Part 1, and I'll stick a link to that video in the cards up in the corner so you can find it easily. I think I answered five or six of your most frequently asked questions there. I'm going to tackle another five or six today, or at least five or six topics today. But as always, if you have a burning question about diamond painting and I don't get to it today, please leave it in the comments below. I have plenty more questions to answer and I'm gonna keep doing these videos until I get all your questions answered or as close to it as I possibly can. So first up today, we're gonna talk about pens. Now, I get more questions about pens and stores than just about any other topic. And so I'm super excited to talk about pens today because I actually really love diamond painting pens. <laughs> Marianne asks, where did you get that beautiful pen? And then Jason asked, I looked, but could you please let us know what your pen preferences are and the link to where you buy them? Love your page and keep it up. Thanks very much, Jason. Thanks for being here. I have a top diamond painting pen store. I've mentioned this store before, but Jim's Handmade Pens on Etsy is absolutely my favorite source for pens. So I especially love Jim's hybrid blanks. So those are the blanks that are part wood and part polymer. They're hand turned. I love the three bump model, but he does, I think he does four bump pens too. So whatever shape fits your hand the best. So I have this beautiful number with wood at the bottom and the turquoise and copper at the top. And then I have this one that I shared in the last video as well, which is like a stained wood with a glitter polymer in the center. So I really love Jim's pens. His quality is always very good in my experience. They come beautifully packaged. He does have a bit of a weight, I believe, because he's pretty popular for a reason. So if you possibly can wait for him to make you a custom pen, I think it's well worth it. These were about 32 or $4 a piece. So they're not extremely inexpensive, but here's why you might need one of these. Eileen says, does anyone get carpal tunnel issues from this? This being diamond painting. And I would say I definitely, I don't know if I get carpal tunnel issues, but I definitely feel some hand pain when I'm using the standard skinny pens that come in diamond painting kits. So I think having a thick bodied pen that fits your hand nicely is really essential. It's really saved me a lot of hand strain and I'm gonna show you another trick about avoiding hand pain. Let me grab a canvas and we'll do a little drilling. Now, of course, I'll stick a link in the description below for Jim's shop. I'm not affiliated with Jim in any way. I'm just a big fan girl. All right, so I grabbed out my canvas that I unboxed here on the channel really recently. This is Wonderland by Matt Lyon. I've been sitting on my hands trying not to start it. Here's a tip if you tend to suffer some hand pain from diamond painting. Now what's funny is, this is actually a piano playing technique, what I'm about to show you, but it really, really helps in diamond painting as well for some reason. So, I've got some drills in my tray here. I'm gonna lay some of this color 160, and I apologize, this is about as close as I can get to my canvas, and this is just about the only angle that I have available to me. So, what I want you to think about if you're experiencing carpal tunnel issues or hand pain is that you don't actually have to hold your pen very tightly in order to set your drills on your canvas. Grip your pen very lightly. Now, what you're gonna do is use the weight of your whole arm and not just your hand squeezing down to lay your drill. So when you set that drill, lift your elbow a bit and just use the weight of your arm to push the drill into place. Now, of course, you don't have to push your drills down for them to stick. If your adhesive is really good, you shouldn't be pushing, really. But if you can think about changing the way that you set your drills from squeezing with your hand and pushing down with your hand to 
holding your pen lightly and then just letting the weight of your arm press the drills down, it really does make a difference in the amount of fatigue that you have when you're drilling, especially for a long time. Eileen, I hope that helps. Of course, another thing that can help is just limiting the amount of time that you drill in one session. It's important to take a break, get up, walk around, get some exercise, take care of your health. That's super important because you wanna be able to diamond paint for years to come. Amy says, hi, what was the green thing you placed just as you started the actual work to hold the paper down? So Amy left this comment on one of my whipping chats and I believe she was referring to this cute little fellow right here, <laughs> my little dragon cover minder. These are called cover minders. For cross stitch, they can also be called needle minders, but they're magnetic tools with two very strong magnets on the back. And these are so handy because they can really help hold your cover paper back. So if I was gonna do some work on my beautiful decorative horse canvas from Treasure Studios Art, which is coming out fabulously. I've been posting a lot of pictures on Instagram of this canvas. So be sure to check me out over there. If I was gonna work on this, what I might do is take one of these little guys, I have a couple on here already, and just use this to hold my plastic back so I can work over here. Now, of course, you can buy these all over Etsy, but they really are very simple to make. I have a pretty big collection here. <laughs> some that I've ordered and then some that Robin has sent me, um, like my Mona Lisa one there um, in my little fairy house, but many also that I've just made out of buttons from Joann's. I just cut the shank off the button and then used some, they're called neodymium magnets um, with E6000 glue. Glued those magnets on the back, two little magnets. So super easy to make and a super indispensable tool, I feel like, now that I have some of these to work with. I did make a video on how I created these, so I'll stick a link to that up in the cards if you're interested. And then I'll stick a link also to one of my favorite Coverminder stores on Etsy so that you can find some other options there too. All right, our next set of questions is about DMC codes and how they work. So, Margaret says, does every canvas have the same symbol for the colors? If you buy a completely different picture, which happens to have those exact colors, will it have those exact symbols? Hope you understand my question. Watching from Ireland, haven't received my first one yet, still learning. Hi Margaret, welcome from Ireland, and I hope your first canvas arrived and is going very well. Um, the answer to your question is no. Does every canvas have the same symbol for the colors? Unfortunately, they do not. Now, as many of you know, most diamond paintings use DMC codes. Um, DMC is actually a cross-stitching floss or an embroidery floss company. I believe it's a French company. And DMC colors have been adopted by diamond painting companies to sort of standardize colors. I have in front of me two examples of DMC code 160, which is kind of a slate blue. Now you can see, this is from my Wonderland canvas that I just had out, and this is from the decorative horse. Even though they're both 160, you can see that they are very slightly different blues. I don't know how well it'll show up on camera. They're not vastly different, but they have a slightly different dye lot, and you can tell that right away. Now the symbol for 160 on Wonderland is a lowercase b, the symbol on the decorative horse for 160 is the sideways arrow. So while a lot of DMC colors are relatively standard colors, with some pretty big variations in dye lots, I find the symbols are typically very different. I hope that answers your question, Margaret. Kristen says, when your diamond paintings are numbered one, two, three, how do you get the DMC number? Now for this question, let's refer to the conundrum that is Diamond Dots proprietary color numbering system. So I have set a couple of drills on this canvas called Spartan Symbol from Diamond Dots. It's just a little fun project that I pull out every once in a while 
when I want a low commitment project. So instead of numbering their colors with DMC codes, Diamond Dots has its own Diamond Dots number. So for example, here they say A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. And it goes on and on. And color number 8182, 8181, 8180, there's no rhyme or reason to it at all. Could I reuse these drills on another canvas? Not really, if it's not Diamond Dots. And I don't do a lot of Diamond Dots. And so I wish I had an easier way to match these, color match these, but I just don't. You can sometimes, using one of these DMC color cards from your embroidery section at your local craft store, kind of riddle out the zone that each color lives in. But I wouldn't say that the colors on here are extremely reliable when it comes to getting an exact match. So maybe this DMC 8182 is a 924 or close to it. But again, the dye lot issue is a pretty big conundrum in the diamond painting world. So I wouldn't say that there is a very easy way to know if you have a canvas that is just numbered. But if you really do want to go to the extra work of trying to figure out what DMC color is closest to the drill color that you're looking at, this DMC color card is a very inexpensive tool that might be helpful for you. All right, our next set of questions is about drills and trays. Cat Eyes MD, my brain read that as Kate Yes MD. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's cat eyes MD says hi how do you get so many drills lined up in your tray at once and then Mel says how about a video on your favorite tray and how you get the beads to line up in trays so I'm gonna show you how I do it I have here two sizes of trays this little white tray came in my very first diamond painting kit ever and I just keep using it it's just a standard white boat and then this is a ginormous white boat that came from AliExpress and I'll stick the link in the description below. I don't buy a lot on AliExpress, but I don't mind buying some tools there. And this one, I had no issues with this seller. I can't guarantee that you won't, but that came quickly and in good condition. So I'll give you that resource below. I think if you're gonna be doing a large section on your canvas, having a big boat, is really handy. You can get your drills to line up in a small boat too though. Okay, so here's how I do it. A, you want plenty of drills in your boat, okay? So dump in a bunch, more than you think you need, and then do a little side to side shaky shake. And have a little patience, it takes a minute. Then tap this way, Tap a little this way, and you'll end up with a bunch you can work with there. Now this boat can hold even more drills, of course, but the same procedure applies. Do a little shake side to side. I actually think getting your drills lined up in the smaller boats is a bit easier in a way. Then tap this way, tap this way, and you'll get a bunch there. Now, I always have a bunch at the bottom that aren't lined up, and just when I use all of these rows, I can do another shake and get those at the bottom lined up, and then just keep adding more. Like I said, I think the more drills you have in your boat, actually, the easier it is to get a bunch lined up for multi-placing. So, there we go. Our last question today is one that I get a lot, and this one is from The Raven Without Wings. She says, I'm a cross-stitch artist and stopped buying patterns from anywhere but directly from the designer due to pattern art theft. Could you make a video guiding us on the best way to report theft? As a community, I want to step up and help put a stop to it, but all I've done up till now is just avoid shady sellers. Well, Raven, thanks for that question. And I think actually 
Avoiding shady sellers is a huge part of how to combat this problem. So I don't know many things, but here's one thing I do know, and that is people are gonna act in their own self-interest most of the time. So if a seller thinks that it's in their self-interest to use stolen artwork or use unlicensed artwork and sell diamond paintings, and people are gonna buy them, and it's gonna make them a lot of money, they're gonna to continue to do it. But if collectively, as a diamond painting community, many of us step up and say, I'm just not gonna support that kind of business practice anymore, then our dollars really can go a long way toward nudging the industry in the right direction. So Raven, when you say avoiding shady sellers is what you've been doing, I think that's absolutely huge. And to all of you who do the same, I think that collectively has huge power. Now, as far as reporting artwork and getting those listings taken down, I'm sad to say it, but most of the time it is a bit of a losing battle. When I'm approached by companies, as I am at least a few times a week, to review some kind of diamond painting that is unlicensed, I always report that infringement directly to the artist because really they are the only person who can do anything about it. If that company is based overseas, truly there's almost nothing that artists can do to report that infringement in any meaningful way. So the best thing that we can all do in my experience and in my humble opinion is to support stores that we know license artwork legally and really there's just a very small handful of them. I hope there are exponentially more as this industry grows and as more of us become aware of this problem. And I really only purchase from a small handful that I know that I can trust. And I, since I get so many questions about this, I'll stick the ones that I am confident purchasing from in the frame here. Now, am I saying that every seller that's not listed here in the video is selling infringing work? I'm not saying that, but I have looked at an awful lot of them and a great rule of thumb, like I've said before, is just to see, does that listing tell you who the artist is? Or does it say licensed by or licensed from if it's commercial art? If it doesn't, it's highly suspicious. And it's something that I personally would avoid. Of course, I can't tell you what to do or tell you what your ethics should be, but that's just something that I feel better about. So thanks for that question, Raven, and thanks to all of you who have asked a similar question over the last few months. When sellers find that licensing work is in their best economic interest, that's what they'll start to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this Your Diamond Painting Questions answered part two. I love to hear your comments. I love to read them. As the channel gets larger, it gets a little bit harder for me to manage all the comments. So I do my best, but please give me a little, a little grace there. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. As always, spread some joy wherever you are, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.